Hi, thanks for joining us today. We're going to be talking about differential equations, the first lesson in chapter 8. Differential equations are equations with derivatives in them. You've already seen a bunch of them this year. We're going to look at a lot more in this unit. In this course, you'll learn only how to solve the simplest type of differential equations in which you can separate variables. And what does separate variables mean? We're talking about So separating variables means all x on one side and all y on the other. This is including dx and dy. dx will count as an x variable. That's one ugly... N. And dy will count as a y variable. Go figure. You may be asked to find a general solution of the differential equation, which gives you a family of curves. This should sound familiar. So the general solution of a differential equation would be something like plus c. You've seen that before. And a particular solution where you'll solve for c. So in that particular solution, we would solve for c. Okay? Differential equations you've seen before, something like this, dy dx equals x times the square root of x squared minus 2. And you would solve this equation basically by integrating both sides. So I'll give you a highlight of it. We had to say dy equals x times the square root of x squared minus 2 dx. You'd integrate both sides and you'd be on your way. That's what we mean by separating variables. That's what we mean by differential equation. An equation with a derivative in it. All right, here we go. So how can we solve these in general? Well, I already gave you highlights, so our first step is to rewrite y prime as dy dx, if necessary. Sometimes we're already going to have dy dx, but as I've been telling you the whole course, dy dx is usually a more helpful variable for us. So, then we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by dx, if necessary. Sometimes it might not be needed. Sometimes it might be easier to solve without doing this first. The most crucial step, the million star step, separating variables, again, including dx and dy. Then we integrate both sides of the equation. We're only going to add c on one side. c only gets added to one side, to one side, not both. And we'll go over that in a second. That tends to be the most talked about question. Then we're going to solve for y if necessary. And here, if necessary means if the problem asks us to solve for y. And then we'll use an initial condition to solve for c if we have one. You can do that first. Sometimes that's better. We'll see. Here we go. Let's get some experience. So... Find a general solution of this differential equation. Again, I hope it's clear to you that this is a differential equation because y prime is a derivative and it's in this equation. The first step is already done for us. They already rewrote y prime as dy dx. So we're going to multiply both sides by dx. And again, when I'm using both sides, we're multiplying everybody. It's kind of like distribution. Whoops, not like that. Hello. To everybody. So x times dx. So we're going to look at 2y dy dx times dx. And then dx times 0 is just 0. Our main thing, and I'll very seldom write this out ever again, 
is that just like 3 halves times 2 is 3, dy dx times dx will say is dy. So I have x dx plus 2y dy equals 0. And the dx's cancel, so to speak. All right, now we need to separate our variables. So if you were looking at this, you would say, well, all the x stuff and all the y stuff is on the same side. We want to undo that. So I'll undo that by subtracting x dx from both sides. And that would give me 2y dy equals negative x dx. Now this is key because that allows us to integrate both sides. That'll be our next step. So I'm actually going to rewrite this on a separate line, and I recommend you too. So we have the integral of 2y dy. It's always good to have more lines than you need. Integral of negative x dx. Over here, the integral of 2y dy, this integral should both be doable. Why don't you try it right now? Three, two, one, go. Did you do it? All right. 2y should have been y squared equals negative x squared over 2 plus c. I'm following directions right now. I'll show you why we follow this direction in a moment. We only have a C on one side. If you have a C on both sides, please erase the one on the Y. We're always going to have C on the X side. Now we are missing one key detail to solve for Y. We want to take the square root of both sides. Careful when you take the square root of both sides. On the same step where I take the square root. Where I'm creating a square root, I add the plus or minus. Super important step. And one a little bit bigger of a square root. Nice and big. Nice big house for my fractions. Make it clear that everybody's in on it. Now, our final answer would be something like y equals plus or minus square root negative x squared over 2 plus c. So I want to be clear here. What this is saying, write your solution as, to example 1, as a pair of possible functions in the form of y equals f of x. Our expression in black, our equation in black, is not a function. Not. A function. The reason it's not a function, the plus or minus. The plus or minus makes somebody not a function. It means it will have positive y values and negative y values for the same x value. And that's just simply not. So, how can we get rid of the plus or minus? All we can do in this case is just to write as two separate functions. One function representing the positive solutions. Now, really, it should be a bigger house like that. I'm off my game today with my square roots. And one with a negative square root. Notice for everything, the C is inside the square root. A lot of students have this disease where they remember to put the plus C at the end, and in case you can't picture it, end up writing like this. Negative X squared over two plus C. And if you think for a second, I don't dock for that, you are wrong. That usually will go much worse than this looks. I'll show you some more examples as we go through. But this is wrong. The house needs to be over the C as well. We take the square root of both sides. We don't just take the square root of both guys inside. 
It is very bad algebra to say that this is the square root of this guy plus the square root of C. That's not okay. Now, why is there only one C? I feel like if some of you are thinking that, some of you may have gotten hung up here where we first have the C. So, let me take us back there. Great, I erased the Y. If we go back to here, and instead of writing this, I wrote plus C1 on one side, and C2 on the other side, two indefinite integrals, two constants of integration, well, maybe I would just subtract C1 from both sides. Nothing wrong with that, right? Besides that crooked line. And I get Y squared equals basically the same thing I had before, but instead of C, I have C2 minus C1. But C2 minus C1 is just some other constant, which we'll call C. 5 minus 2 is just some other constant, we call 3. Okay? So that's why it was okay to, I don't know if we go back all the way, whatever, to have something that looks like this. Oh, man, it's really freaking out. Okay? That's why it's okay to have a positive solution and a negative solution with just one C on one side. Because it's the same thing. It all worked out the same either way. Let's do another example before we get bogged down in this one. Find an equation of a function, okay, so no plus or minuses, no funny business, which contains this point. Here's a bit of a spoiler alert. If you want to try this problem without any spoilers, without any help, pause the video right now. Okay, three, two, one. This point is an initial condition. And that's what will let us solve for C. So don't plug that in right away. Don't do anything crazy. And whose slope is this for every point on the curve? Well, slope, that's a funny word. What's the calculus word for slope? Derivative. The derivative is the slope of a tangent line. And that's what we mean by slope of a curve, the slope of its tangent lines. So if you have an equation looking like this, and our goal is to get all the x's on one side and all the y's on the other, what I'm saying is we want to get the y over here and the x over here, the dx over here, well, the nice solution here, if this looks familiar to you, it's cross multiply. So don't be afraid to exploit algebra that you already know to allow you to do these problems quicker. So I'm gonna cross multiply, that's all I'm doing when I get y times dy equals x e to the x squared dx. Two equations, or sorry, two expressions, both equal. We're going to take the integral of both sides. And I trust some of you, some, emphasis on the sum, to do this integral in your head, even to do both integrals, even though this one's fresher. Did you do it? Did you try it? You should try it right now. Over here is a bit easy. Y squared over 2 not worrying about the plus c because it's on the y side and we're going to put our plus c on the x side always how about this one well if you thought you needed a hook off that's good our main thing our complicated thing is the exponential the hook off for an exponential is the derivative of the exponent the exponent's derivative x squared is 2x and I need a 1 half, because 1 half times 2 is 1. So I get 1 half. That's the hook off. And the rule for exponential is to stay the same. I am really over-enunciating the word exponential. Like a crazy person. Okay. So, we have this equation. But we want a function 
which will look like just y equals. That's another word for solve for y. We want y equals some function of x. We want to solve for y. So we'll go about our business. Let's multiply both sides by two. No, I already want, I want the blue, right? All right. I'm multiplying the whole equation, both sides by two. And that'll get me y squared, two times y squared over two, equals e to the x squared plus two times c. Now, you can solve, uh, sorry, you can simplify this. A lot of textbooks, a lot of solutions will simplify it, so I'm gonna show you the way. The way I'm gonna simplify this is by calling this C1. Two times a constant is just some other constant. And you must relabel if you do this. If you want to do this, great. That's how a lot of solutions will be phrased. So you should get used to seeing the C1. If you never do this, it's okay. We will live. We will all get along together. But you'll need to learn how to do this eventually. So two times some constant is just some other constant. We're gonna call it C1 instead of constant nothing. And now we need to solve for y taking the square root of both sides. Since I took the square root of both sides, I have to have a plus or a minus. Don't sleep on the plus or minus. And now, the hardest part. Check plus or minus. Not just that we have it, that's not what this means. We go back to here. Which one do I need? Do I need the positive square root? Am I getting a positive y value? Or do I need the negative square root? Am I getting a negative y value? A moment's thought shows that we don't want the positive one. We want y equals negative square root e to the x squared plus c. One. Last but not least, we're going to have to solve for C, but I want to make sure you understand this. We chose based on the initial condition. So we checked whether it should be positive or negative based on initial condition. All right. Last but not least, negative 3 that y value equals negative square root e to the zero square root of zero plus c1. Simplifying, divide both sides by a negative, three equals the square root of one plus c1. We're solving for c1. Square both sides, that's the surefire way to get rid of a square root. 9 equals 1 plus C1. 8 equals C1. This is modeling good work, or it will be for one minute longer until I do the thing you can't. Shrinky, shrinky. And our final answer, and I'm emphasizing this, rewrite all together. y equals negative square root, pulling from this one and this one, e to the x squared plus 8. It's really important you figure it out it was negative square root. Many problems will be designed to catch you on that. If you do not check, you will lose points. 
Why was it the negative square root? Because we wanted to hit this negative y value. Capish? Here we go. Next one. Last one. Find a general solution of this equation. Again, I feel like I've called every problem today super important, but it's true. Find a general solution of this equation. This will come up over and over again. Are you ready? The number one thing I would recommend you do is you think of this as a group. Think of the negative 2 as stuck with the y. So that way we multiply both sides by dx. What we get is dx times y minus 2 equals dx cancels with dx x dy. Don't distribute. That way lies darkness. Distributing like that is very bad. You will go crazy. You will get lots of things wrong. No, 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 no. The other thing I would keep in mind is keep dx and dy on top. What the heck am I talking about? Some students are like, oh, I'll divide by dx. Have you ever seen x dx like that before? No, 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 no. Dividing by dx, dividing by dy is usually very bad business. Okay? So what am I trying to say? I guess I'm trying to say don't ever divide by dy or dx. Heaven forbid. Calculus gods forbid. All right. What we will do is I will divide both sides by y minus 2. Eventually, I hope, this step will be superfluous. And we'll have, let's group the dy stuff together. This is good. That's moving in the right direction. If you thought x should be on top, if you had x dy over y minus 2, that's the same thing. Convince yourself. Right? 3 times 2 halves. Oh, sorry. 3 times 5 over 2 is the same as 3 times 3 times 5 over 2. I realized it was not clear with the words alone. That's all I'm doing here. That's all I'm doing. All right. And now you would divide both sides by x to kill the x's. And you would get... I don't know. I'm not happy with that. Moody dx over x over dy over y minus 2 equals dy over y minus 2. Now, some people can see it right from the orange, and that's what I want to emphasize. If you go all the way back to the orange step, dx times y minus 2, x dy, we're kind of switching the x over here and switching the y junk over here. It's kind of like cross dividing. It's kind of like the same thing as undoing the cross multiplication. If you look at this fraction one more time and cross multiplied it, or if you looked at this fraction, and cross multiplied, you would get our orange fraction our orange equation, I hope that's clear. Because that's how I think of it. I think of the x moving and the y over minus 2 moving. Not the most formal thing in the world, but it works for us. All right, the main reason I rewrote it was so we can integrate both sides. That is a nice integral sign. Wow, look at its cousin. It's awful. The integral of dx over x is natural log 
wait for it. Absolute value of x, good on you if you put absolute value, plus c, this is the x side, so it gets the plus c. The derivative of y minus 2 is 1, so that's the hook off. That's just natural log, absolute value, y minus 2. Did you remember both absolute values? Did you try the problem out? Good if you did, bad if you didn't. Shrinky, shrinky. Oh, look at that. Seeing how the sausage is made. Good. All right. Solving for y here is a little more touchy. All right, solving for y, I'm going to put in exponential form. So solve for y, exponential form, which is kind of like putting an e under both sides. That's kind of like what it is. It's a little informal to say that. So we're going to have e to the natural log absolute value of x plus c. All of that is in the exponent. The plus c is in the exponent. The plus c is in the exponent. Equals absolute value y minus 2. Please make sure you understand what I'm doing. I have the base, which is log, log base e, became the base. The old output became the new input. The old input became the new output. Base, answer, power. Doesn't work for exponentials. That's weird. Base, power, answer for logs. Okay. Anyway. Does it make sense? I hope. Um, that blue. Over here, I'm going to use E rules so I can simplify the log. And here's a tip, if you're ever taking a test, cough, cough, on exponentials, you need it to be e to a natural log with nothing else. It can't be e to the 2 natural log. It can't be e to the natural log plus 2. It can't be something like that. It has to look like what we have right here. e, natural log, nobody else. e to the c. Absolute value y minus 2. e to the natural log will cancel, so I'll have e to the c times absolute value of x, okay, these are still times, I like how that looks, equals absolute value y minus 2, I can't believe I have to shrink again, whatever, great. And now to break out of absolute value, and I see a lot of students struggle with this every day, we can get y minus 2 out of its absolute value shell by putting a plus or minus on the other side. Now, I thought that was 4 -y. Plus or minus e to the c. So I know this video is getting a little long, but we're almost done. Absolute value of x equals y minus 2. This whole thing is just some other constant. It's either positive 1 times e to some power or negative 1 times e to some power. So I'm going to call that c1. And then last but not least, to solve for y, I would add 2 to both sides, c1, absolute value x, plus 2. The most common question I get here is why can't we just add 2 to the c? 
And that's because C1 is multiplying with the absolute value first. So I can't add two. They're not like terms. The other most common question I get is why couldn't we just put the plus or minus with the C1 in the earlier examples? Well, we can't put the plus or minus with the C1 here or here because the plus or minus, I can't believe I deleted both examples, is on the outside of the radical and we can't bring it into the radical. We can't bring the plus or minus into the radical. This is special, this C is special because it could absorb. It could absorb it. So C1 in this example would just work out to be positive or negative, depending on what the right answer was. Whoa, sorry. Whereas this C would have worked out to be eight no matter what you did out here. That's the scary part. You would get eight every single time. There'd be no way to check your error except by making sure you hit the initial condition. Last but not least is ask you to find a particular solution. So we know the general solution, again, the general solution is what we just found. Y equals C1 times the absolute value of X plus two. Make sure that's right, good. Y of one equals one half. A lot of students have trouble writing this as a point. It means when X is one, Y is one half. A lot of people replace the C1. We don't know what C1 is, that's the whole idea. Absolute value of one, look at that eccentric looking one. Crazy. Absolute value of one is one. One times C1 is C1. One half minus two if you're scared. Uh, ooh, wow, this is a hesitation. Negative three halves if you're brave and you get as a final particular solution, y equals negative three over two, absolute value of x plus two. One common question that I like, e question, question I like is Mr. Levin, what are we finding? What did we just find? So what? So this is the equation whose derivative looks like this. And that's weird or trippy to think about. It should be. This equation has a derivative that looks like this. And to emphasize that again with another example, this equation has a derivative that looks like this. That's what we're talking about. You should go ahead and try to do some homework problems, try to cement some of this idea, or just watch the video again. I don't know, double speed, whatever you're doing. You guys have a great night, have a great day, and I will talk to you later. Bye.